morning, everyone. Uh, a minute, they set up. My name is Patrick, as they set up. My name is Patrick. I'm a WordPress developer. I run a small agency called Webmoja Studio Limited. It started by my bedside almost eight years ago. I started working with WordPress uh, from 2010. Uh, for my presentation, I'll mostly talk about numbers. And I know most of us don't like uh, talking about numbers. Numbers will have to do with hours, money, and uh, basically what it counts for you to deliver a successful project for large organizations. Uh, my clients, some of the clients that I've worked with include uh, Energy Regulatory Commission, uh, I've worked for USAID, East Africa Trade and Investment Hub, developing a WordPress project for them. I have done, uh, most of them are petroleum companies, Axon Energy Limited, I've worked for some companies here in Mombasa, called Dandros, if you know Dandros. Right now, actually I was from a trip, I'm working for a project for Taita County, this uh, CDF portal that I'm building for them. So my presentation will be mostly how to deliver a successful project for a large organization. And it's not just about large organization, it's how is it that you can use WordPress. You know, most of us think WordPress as, a, as something that really can only be used maybe either for personal use, blog, or what. But today I just want to give out a possibility, uh, share. There's the possibility of using WordPress to really feed yourself feed uh, your family. For me, I have a small daughter, two-year-old daughter and a wife, and we all depend on WordPress since 2010. So, wait, if you see typos on the presentation, eh, please do not mind. Eh? I was doing this in a rush so that I can be able to present this. So, let's see. This thing is not working for me. So as I said, my client's portfolio are those, the ones that I try to show, Energy Regulatory Commission, Axon, East Africa, Hans, and quite a number. So this presentation lasts maximum, hopefully in the next 20 minutes. I like presenting fast, so that please pay attention. So my presentation is a blueprint of how to develop projects for large-scale organization. I'll speak about three things. There is growth, how do you grow to start working with large organizations so that you can be able to do projects for them? I'll talk about the three Ps. There's the people, there's the process, and there's the performance. And then lastly, I'll talk about investment. Know your numbers. So, um, this thing is not working for me, so. <laughs> so, growth. How to identify key opportunities for large-scale projects. How I do, okay, most of you may wonder, how did these guys start working for these organizations? Some of them, as a developer, or as a business person, or as someone who's looking to work for, uh, to grow your career, you should always have that mindset of where can I get these opportunities? Where are people talking? Go to a restaurant, go to an uh, entertainment place, go to meetups. You'll always find there's always a talk, people sitting around, if you see three or four people seated somewhere, at least one knows an idea of what's happening. I'll give you an example. The way um, I started doing the one uh, currently doing, the one for constituency CDF portal, eh? I went somewhere, then I had, there's a new law that the government has allowed, before CDF will only be used for security and building uh, schools. Only that. So they are recently allowed to out they take some portion of the fund to build portals or websites to showcase what they are doing for those uh, constituencies. So you see now those are 297 MPs. You could imagine if you just work for 10 of them. Just 10. Don't, don't take the numbers to 50 or what. Just work for 10. Develop 10 websites. So immediately, I contacted my local MP and went to his place. Is, this, is it true that you guys have a portal? Then obviously, because they're politicians, they'll tell you, oh, yeah, you can do this. How much do you want? So it, your business skills will matter there. So immediately, I go that one. And I'll be honest, even if you Google, how many constituencies have that? It's currently a new thing. So if you're here and you're a developer, please 
go to your local MP or any other person that can connect you because that's a new thing, it's a new opportunity and I want that to be built on WordPress. For Energy Regulatory Commission, how it got it, I was subcontracted and I was subcontracted because someone simply Googled, okay, ERC had a problem with Joomla. It was, uh, there were issues with security, it was being hacked. Most of the time you'll go to ERC website, then it will lead you to a pornographic site. So <laughs> someone told them, you know, the best thing is have uh, your website on WordPress. So the person who got the contract knows looking, how will I get a developer who knows how to do this stuff in WordPress and a good developer? So when they are Googling, Somehow, when they Google WordPress Kenya, WordPress tutorials, if you Google my name, by the way, Patrick Mochugu, the first thing that comes up is patrickmochugutwitchplus.com. How many of you know Twitchplus? Twitchplus is like an uh, educational site that teaches you a lot about web development. It happened that when I was hustling then, 2010, when I was by my bedside, I used to write tutorials, these things that you hear people write online. So I wrote tutorials for WordPress on Twitchplus. So because it's a big site, if you Google my name, it instantly comes up, and WordPress developer instantly comes up. So that's how those guys got to know me, and that's how I ended up being a subcontractor for that. So put yourself out there. So that's how you grow into it. And again, meetups like this, I'll be very honest. As I've been a developer for eight years, but this is my first WordCamp, and I really wish I'd attended the previous WordCamps because I've learned a lot. Like, to, like one of the things that I took from here was WordPress is not just the way I was looking at it, numbers and building a business for other people. Some people are here just to learn how to use it for their personal use. So that's a big thing for me. So it, it's a new niche for me. So right now I'm on the lookout. Who are those young clients who just want to start building something? For, how can I consult for them to be able to grow their personal website? So how, that's how you grow into it. Mm, before I skip... So, uh, how to identify key opportunities for large scale projects, leverage on past projects. Uh, what I meant by leverage on past projects to get leads for new ones is, I'll mention a name, for example, one, when you go to one of my client sites, let's say axonenergy.co.k, I'll be honest, I was paid probably 350, 350 USD, that is 35,000. It's a big organization. But then when I was being given that project, Someone else told me, you know, how can you be paid so little for such a large organization? But at that time, okay, at that time, I'll be very honest, it was all about getting food for the family. It was all about that. So I didn't care. I just wanted that meal for that day. But later on, last year, we have uh, just launched the ERC this year, but it started in December. Because of that Axon Energy project, which was paid 35,000 shillings, and because it's an energy company, that's how ERC saw that. Apart from this guy just not knowing, about, knowing WordPress, he, was, he has also built for petroleum companies. And the Axon Energy for the 35,000, it really landed me other projects. Like I've worked for, uh, there's a petroleum company in Uganda, has over 30 stations called Don Uganda. Don Uganda, I've built a station for them. I've built Tosha, if you have seen ads for Tosha, if you have ever seen an ad for Tosha Petroleum, uh, that's my website. So, again, leverage on past projects. Even if you do some, a, a blog for yourself or blog for someone, that's equally an opportunity. You never know. Tomorrow, you might find someone who, wants, who is a bit established and wants to build a personal site, and you'll get an opportunity out of it. And even if you're not into business, because I said I'll speak about numbers, even if you, the little knowledge that you have about WordPress, you can either do either develop for someone, even consultancy. Because the knowledge you have here, you can use it as a consultancy for someone else. It's not a, it's not a must that you become a developer yourself, but even consulting. Because WordPress powers, we did the numbers, 30% of the world, you could imagine how many people want to get into WordPress. Uh, write a good proposal. For the developers, I'll just tell, I'll just link you to because I'm not an expert at speaking good proposals, but go and look for a site called WP Elevation. It's run by somebody called Troy Dean. WP Elevation. You learn how to build successful businesses as a WordPress consultant. He has the best tutorials, and that's even he motivates you. Out of it, I learned that 
So long as I have this, this skill, it's not necessarily I have an office somewhere. By the way, you don't have an office anywhere. I simply just walk from one office to another, one town to another, developing sites. Okay. So I'll speak about now the next thing, the three Ps essential to delivering a successful project. People. Now you get into this organization or you are having a website for your big organization. People. Identify key stakeholders and culture within an organization. I'm not very good at speaking. Uh, but the first time, if, I, if you allow me to speak about that uh, ERC project, the commission has over 300 to 400 employees in that headquarters. They're in three floors. So I got in. The first floor, everyone, okay, the day of the, when they are meeting me, hundred, okay, I, I did three meetings of 80 people, 80 people, 80 people. Those meetings, you remember, mind you, I'm talking the same thing to three different groups. So there, you understand when people are raising questions, like, for example, people, like, like they tell you, you know, here we want this website, for example, they tell you, people call about prices. People call about uh, how do they get license. So out of it, I got to understand exactly what is it that ERC wants to achieve. And how is it that WordPress is able to help them achieve that. Because the good thing about WordPress, we talked about categories, posts, pages. We're able to categorize a number of things. So there and then, I actually now started realizing, initially I just thought I'd build something simple and it's over. But from just discussing with the people around and the key stakeholders do not mean that, I don't mean that the commissioners or the directors, the receptionists. In fact, one of the people who gave me the most ideas of how to build that website and to, for it to be successful was the person who picks calls, the receptionist there, the first floor. So that's where I understand. So that's why I'm saying if you're to deliver a successful project or if you have a company and you, are, you want to deliver a successful project for yourself, please, as an MD or as the CEO, please just... Take time, shut up, uh, okay, sorry, just keep quiet and let your employees speak. Because your employees, right from the receptionist, are the people who know what they really want. Process. Process, design and development process, content first approach. Now, this one is not necessarily even business. Let's say you want to start a blog. Please think about the content that you want to put in first. Most of us, and ideally, also me. What I usually, initially, what I used to do is, if I want to start uh, a website, I immediately rush to think of a theme. Which theme will I use? How beautiful will it look? Uh, you go to Theme Forest and start searching for those themes and install and hey, install the demo one, and you really want it to look like the demo. Most, by the way, most of the clients, uh, most of the clients that approach me, some of them online tell me, I want you to pick a certain theme like the seven or what, and then customize it from there. But it will really help you if you are into developing to WordPress. The first thing that you're supposed to do is to come up with your content. Write it in Microsoft Word, a home, about us. Write all the details. Collect your images. Out of it, do a sketch. But my process is I collect content. I do a sketch on paper. I do a sketch on a computer, wireframe. After that, I do a mock-up on PSD. It's a long process. Then, thereafter, after I've visualized how the website will be, I go and pick a theme. I'll be honest. I don't hard code these things. I'll not be here and say, I'm a hard coder. I'll do themes myself. No, I pick a theme. But by the time I'm picking a theme, trust you me, I already know exactly how the outcome will be. So that's the process I insist. And if you adopt a content-first approach, things will be easier for Even if it's your personal blog, think about your blog. List out categories on Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word or Notepad should be your first point before you even think of how your blog will look like. Uh, uh, so, hey, I've moved ahead of my slides. Mm, content first approach. So mockups, first iteration. First it what I meant by for content first approach, then mockups, then first iteration. Okay, if you're a developer, what I usually do, I give my clients two uh, revisions. The first revision is, after you've given me your content, after I've developed your website, I bring it to you, you review. And there I allow the client to critique. I, I always tell my clients, take even a week. Like for example, uh, now for the one for the ERC, because now that's uh, the large organization can speak about. 
the initial contract was build three websites. You could imagine, build three websites to a point that they're almost what we want, then we'll pick one. Now, let's think about the numbers. Even if you're being paid 500K, if you do three websites and you start doing, which I'll go to investment, which I'll talk about numbers and how I do numbers myself, is three websites, it mean you're dividing your profit. And I don't know how you guys, I don't know how developers, I don't know, mine, the way I do my profit is, I count the number of hours that it will take. I divide by the rate, uh, my rate per hour, but mostly here in Kenya, what applies is not rate per hour, but it's, for me, it's a rate per day, because I develop websites, okay, if I'm developing a website during a day, I only work for four hours in developing, I take one hour for business growth, and another hour for accounting, just to do my invoices and look at my accounts and see where am I going. So if I take, if I, I know it will take me 20 days to do this website, and I tell my clients that I work from Monday to Friday, Saturday and Sunday, I don't work. So Monday to Friday, it means 20 times 5 is 100 hours. 100 hours, if it will take me, uh, no, four, it's 4 times 5, that is 20 hours in a week. Times 2 weeks, it will take 40 hours. If my rate per hour is, uh, currently my rate per hour is 35 USD, I do for 40 hours times 35, I tell you now that's the cost. How did I reach to that number of $35? $15 is mine, $5 is marketing for my business, the rest is profit, to cool at the end of the year. Sivo. So know your numbers. So first iteration, so what I did, I gave them only one iteration and I gave them two months. Mind you, these two months are moving, Develop the DG, they usually call him a DG. The director general will give his review, who will give the commissioners, will come and sit for a board meeting. Again, working for a big organization or developing a project for a large organization, you need to have the patience. People think if I win a contract for, let's say, a county to develop a WordPress website for a county, it will be so fast. It, most, mostly they actually tell you this will take two months. But trust you me, it will take more than that. Like the ERC one, I've done it for almost, uh, we launched when? June, and we started December. Those are six months. So if I was not sharp enough to know what my numbers were in December, I would have accepted the first quote was 200 uh, Gs. I refused. I wouldn't tell you what the numbers I agreed to, but I looked at the numbers. So first iteration, never go for those things that clients tell you, and you do three websites, then you'll pick one. Just tell them I'll do one, give me enough revisions, then I'll go to the second iteration. So second and third is based on the contract. If you do a third one, based on the contract that you agree. Testing, testing is usually what with WordPress. The other day, there's a friend of mine, Abdi here, who wanted just to know how to install uh, with, uh, WordPress in his computer. So testing with WordPress is so easy. So if you know how to install, you simply test. And the way I usually test is uh, the plugins that I run to test my code, the Windows that I blocked yesterday, there's something key that you're talking about, security. Briefly, let me talk about security before I move to the next slide. I'll to, uh, how you handle WordPress security. First of all, because we are, we are avoiding to go into the nitty gritties. The first thing that I do, most of the websites that I do, the WAP-admin, I usually remove that WAP-admin because all of us know if it's a WordPress website, and you want to log into the user, username and password, what do I do? I do slash wp-admin. So the first security step is very simple. Eliminate that. Put a custom URL, have my login or something, or something you can remember, wp, okay, webmojastudio.com slash, let's say Patrick, then it gives me, but you have to give that uh, organization what's your daily rate and how many hours do you expect to work? Out of it, they now can start justifying how long will this contract take. So the contract was for 20 days. Uh, it was for 20 days for development. And we decided uh, the daily rate because I was used to the hourly rate. And I quickly got that. So the essence of measuring time, and I was able to demonstrate the previous projects, how many hours it has taken me to complete. So I, saw, I talked about tools that I use for project management, Toggle. Basecamp, how many people know Basecamp? Basecamp. Okay, tufanya hivi. Mkitoka hapa. All of us understand Kiswahili? Mkitoka hapa, when you live here, please. You came for WordCamp, yes? 
But please, go and Google productivity tools. Productivity tools. What is it that I can start measuring my productivity? Because, you know, as youth, we like complaining. Hakuna kazi. nini. And how, how is it that you measure your productivity way before you even get that job? So go and Google productivity tools. Basecamp is a project management tool that tells you, you list in your ideas. You, this is the topic, the subheadings, the to-do list and that. So I use Basecamp to do my to-do list. Uh, Toggle, I've mentioned, is for time. For invoices, because I don't have money, okay, I didn't list it there, because I don't have money to do big accounting softwares, I use Harvest. How many of you know Harvest? Oh, so, chitajua. <laughs> oh, in other words, use an Excel sheet. Now, Excel sheet, and that one I'm ready to even, for developers, uh, you know of this site called, uh, what? Uh, how many people know Nathan Nello? Okay, Nathan Nello, that should be a long shot. Eh? But there's something he uses, he's a freelancer, he actually earns almost, he does five figures in the US. He does 100,000, 100,000 every year, 100,000 USD, and he's a freelance at home. Nathan uses what you call a simple Excel sheet, but he calls it a daily accountability spreadsheet. In that daily accountability spreadsheet, Nathan has a simple Excel sheet that tells this is the client, this is when they've paid me my deposit, this is when they're paying the final deposit, and this is how we're paying. I'll share this. In fact, on my, on that daily accountability spreadsheet, I'll share Google you know, with uh, this uh, uh, camp, so you can go and download and start making your own, have your own Excel sheet. As if you don't, if you cannot go into software, your own Excel sheet of how to just uh, measure your productivity. Okay. Final thing that I think, I think this is the final thing. Huh? Deals, uh, deals within the deal. Again, as I said, my presentation is really into numbers, deals, and if you're a developer here, and now this is goes to the developers, be ready to share your deal. I wouldn't lie. If, for example, for example, the one the county is, if people refer you to, you need to know how to strike deals within a deal. Don't be a developer and be close-minded not to be able to share things with other people or strike deals with people. The only way for you to go higher, you have to stand on someone's shoulder. So you have to allow someone else to stand on your shoulder moving up. So you need to know how to strike deals within a deal.